Okay, so I did <clears throat> the Caparel biome. So I'll start off with the biofactors, which is all the living parts of the ecosystem. So the majority of plant life consists of poison oak, yucca whipple, dandelions, toyon, Chinese trees, and cacti, and also pines and oaks, and mahogany trees also live in this biome. So the animals in the biome, uh, bobcats, coyotes, jack ra jackrabbits, wild goats, and collared pe peccary. So every animal within this biome have evolved to live sustainably in this terrain through camouflage. So you can see with the mountain lion and the bobcat and the coyote, they all just have really tan colors to match in with the, the tan environment that they live in. And you can also see that within jackrabbits. So they also have evolved to stand great, withstand great heats and build techniques to consume unusual resources provided to them. And one example of that is the collared peccary, which is basically a wild pig. They consume the cacti within the environment and their digestive tract has evolved to allow them to do that. So, moving on to habitats, the biomes are found in very few parts of the world. They are located in the western tip of Australia, coastal areas of the Mediterranean, South Africa, and the west coast of the United States, and that is what I'm doing this presentation on. I just wanted to focus on one of the biomes instead of all of them because if I did all of them there would be multiple food webs, multiple uh, different endangered species and issues and so on. So together the biome only takes up close to 2% of the land on the surface of earth. However, close to 20% of the world's plant diversity is inside these biomes. So their climates include hot, dry summers and mild, rainy winters, and these biomes only receive nearly 38 to 100 centimeters of rain per year, and that makes them very susceptible to forest fires in the summer and within the fall. So I'll move on to the food web. So down at the bottom right here, we have the cacti, the dandelions, and let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's a little blurry. Um, the carpal bushes and dandelions and cacti. So the primary consumers are the wild goat. I don't know why that's so blurry. The wild goat, the, let's see, the, the jackrabbit. And the collared picari, that's the wild pig I was talking about that eat cactuses. And up at the top, we have coyotes, bobcats, and mountain lions. So the picari, I said, eats the cactus. And the wild goat and the jackrabbit, they mainly uh, eat the dandelions down at the bottom. And obviously the bobcats and coyotes and mountain lions, they consume jackrabbits, goats, and the Picaris, whatever they can really get their claws on. And over to the left over here, we have the decomposers. And I wish I could zoom in a little bit. Um, but those, the decomposers include the uh, millipedes and the ectonomy seeds, which is basically just a type of bacteria. So their, their job is just to consume all the dead matter within the environment. And I'll move on to symbiotic relationships. So one example is the manzinta plants. I hope I'm saying that right. When eaten by jackrabbits or any other animal, its seeds are kept in track through the animal's digestive tract. So the seeds are um, furtherly spreaded throughout the environment. This benefits both the animal through nutrition and the plant. 
and one other example is the honeybees and desert flowers. So the honeybees obviously get the food and many flowers are pollinated in this relationship. So that's obviously not just the carpal biome, it's also um, throughout many other biomes throughout the world, it's not rare. And moving on to endangered species, the saquin kit fox. So they are mainly rare because of their loss of habitat, whether it be from wildfires or um, human destruction through buildings. So there's only about 7,000 left alive today, and a majority of them can be found in the carpal biomes. And the Sierra Nevada foxes, um, they're mainly ex close to extinction because of their lack of genetic diversity. So when there's one issue that results in uh, their extinction, then the majority of them go away with them as well because they just don't have enough diversity. They don't, they don't have enough... Um, I don't know, you know what I'm saying, diversity to survive. And there's only about half a million of them left alive today. So gray wolves, they're hunted like pests, so there's only 6,000 left alive. Um, and now environmental issues. The largest concern is wildfires because of the small amount of rain every year. And the second concern is human destruction through building attractions and homes within the biome. So lastly, the temperature, interesting aspects. Um, the temperature can exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Plants within this biome have different root systems that spread out mainly uh, horizontally to catch more water than they could with a normal root system, which is typically vertically. And plants with a vertical root system have such just because they usually get a lot more rain than a plant would in this biome. So certain plants have adapted to wildfires, however, by being resistant to fire, and also their seeds also have been known to grow in whenever the fire passes, and they basically have evolved to know when it's safe for the seed to open and grow again. So, and last, the most, most animals within the biome are nocturnal, which just means they sleep during the day and are awake during the night. And I mainly think that most of them are nocturnal t because of the heat, and they just don't want to be exposed. They don't want to lose too much of their body mass when, when outside of the heat. I think they just lose a lot more energy during the day if they were to hunt then. So, yeah, that's my presentation.